Watch you guys, does it really matter what thermal paste you choose or use on your CPU? Now, normally there's three types of thermal compounds that you can use. The metal thermal compounds, which are generally uh, electrically conductive, uh, which is known as liquid metal. The other one are non-conductive, and these are normally your, your general ones you see here, which are ceramic thermal compounds. And then you've got your silicone thermal compounds as well, which are, these are normally your thermal pads. So these are the normal types of thermal compounds that you're going to see for your CPU. So which one is right for you? Well, it depends on a lot of things. People seem to love to overcomplicate things today. And again, I would say that there's people breaking it down in such a way where you have to look at the composition of the compound, the cooling effectiveness of that compound, the viscosity of the compound and the density of it. And then also the price. These are the things that people are telling people to look out for when you choose your thermal compound. I mean, really, all you need to do is go and choose one of the top brands of ceramic thermal compounds out there. And there's quite a few to choose from. Choose one of those, stick them on your CPU, put the uh, heat sink on it and forget all about it. This is what normal people do when building a computer or applying thermal compound to a CPU. People seem to overcomplicate things and uh, how you apply in thermal compound and the right thermal compound to use. You'll get tons of people saying, oh, you should have used thermal grizzly. You should have used this. You should have used that. And this is what complicates the whole issue. If you're a general computer user, then any type of ceramic thermal compound will be perfectly fine. Now, if you're an extreme overclocker, you might want to consider using uh, the top tier of ceramic thermal compounds out there or even go as far as using the metal uh, thermal compounds like liquid metal, which are conductive and you have to be super careful with them. And again, these people are extremists and they're going to basically want to uh, use the best quality thermal compounds that money can buy to eke out extra performance out of their CPU, especially when they're overclocking to the extreme limits of that CPU. And this is also going to see a rise in CPU temperatures. And this is because you're putting more voltage through uh, the actual CPU. Now we're talking about extreme overclocks here, which means you're obviously going to want to get the best thermal compound you can. And this means you're going to have other components in that PC, which means you're going to get the best performance out of these extreme overclocks. So I do believe that the average person is not going to need the super bleeding edge uh, compounds out there just for general computer use. You can go and use MX4 or MX5 and they'll be perfectly fine. And they don't cost an absolute fortune to buy those types of compounds. But when you're talking bleeding edge uh, compounds, they can cost double the money. So you have to bear all that in mind. If you've got money to burn and you don't care and you're worried about that extra five degrees or six degrees difference, then by all means, splash the cash and buy what compound you want. But I think Thermal Grizzly Cryonut is probably one of the best ceramic thermal compounds out there on the market, which gives you the best performance, I think. And some of the other ones are very close to it. Uh, but depending on price and depending on your budget will determine which one is right for you. And there's literally hundreds to choose from when it comes to thermal paste. And you can see here, this is their thermal paste results. They've done just a few here. And you can see there's not massive amounts of difference between all of these thermal compounds, as you can see. And again, there's only about five degrees difference between all the top leading brands, but prices do vary, so do check. And again, I've checked loads of results out online. And again, these do vary. So take these with a pinch of salt. And again, choose which one suits your pocket and just go with it. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about which ones are the best ones to go for because one degree difference. But we'll generally go through and I'll show you some that you can choose. The Noctua NTH1 is a pretty decent uh, compound you can use. You've also got Arctic MX4, which is a very a good affordable type of compound you can use. And you can see here, there's quite a few people buying it. And that's because it does exactly what it says on the tin and cools your CPU. Moving on to Thermal Grizzly, moving up the food chain here a little bit for the price. But again, does a pretty good job at what you needed to do. Probably one of the best uh, ceramic thermal compounds you can buy. But again, you're going to have to pay a premium because it's been heavily promoted on YouTube by a lot of YouTube channels. So moving on to the more expensive stuff, which is like your Thermal Grizzly, Cryonut Extreme. And this is £79.91, and that is for 33 uh, grams. I think I think that is there, or 9 mil. 
Again, quite an expensive type of compound, probably not needed for your just general use, but for extreme overclockers, then I would say, yeah, go for it. Then you've got your uh, uh, Proling uh, Mantec, I don't know how you pronounce that, PK-3. This has got some good reports on it, but again, not a lot of people seem to be buying it. And again, it's pretty expensive, £16.18. pence. And moving on to the MX-5, which is from Arctic again, good compound. And uh, sometimes this can come out a little bit watery, as you see in my previous video. I think they did recall some of this stuff because of the um, the sort of texture of it. But again, uh, I think that's been resolved now. Moving on to this one here, you can see again, 7.99. This is going to be plenty perfect for uh, cooling your CPU. Arctic Silver 5, this one's been out for many, many years. Pretty pricey for what it is. Uh, but again, does a pretty good job. And the good old tried and trusted HY510. There's quite a few different brands of these, uh, but this one is the really cheap budget stuff. But if you're building PCs uh, for a living and you've got tons of computers to build and you're trying to do it and save money, then something like this is going to be perfectly fine. You're going to get pretty good temps with this stuff. I've had no problems with it. And uh, again, you've seen it, uh, me putting it onto CPUs before. And there's not so much of a big issue for me for uh, temperatures with this. Again, it's not the best out there, but it will do the job. So you can see here we've got thermal paste performance rankings here, and you'll be able to see that uh, Tom's Hardware has done a full uh, test of these here. Now, you can read through here, and it will give you a full list of what is the best thermal paste out there. To be honest with you, don't expect massive results like 30 or 40 degree difference uh, between uh, each individual um, compound because you're not going to see that. And he's done loads of different tests on water and air and other types of charts like that. So I'll leave the link in the video description. Now, if your PC or laptop is running hot or it's usually having high temperatures, then you may need to change your thermal compound and you can do a stability test of your system to see what your maximum temperatures are. And you can run AIDA 64 or something like that to see what uh, sort of max temps are for your CPU and your GPU. If they're running super hot and it's getting into the red zone, you may need to start thinking about what's causing it. It could be the fact that your compound is dried up and it's not working the way it should do, and you may need to remove the heat sink, clean it off, and put some new fresh thermal compound on. Maybe clean out all the dust of the computer, clean out all the fins and dust out of the CPU cooler, make sure the fan is spinning at the right uh, uh, speeds, make sure you've not sort of got your fan curved too low where the fans are not kicking in and it's causing your PC to run super hot. Check all these things and then basically, hopefully your temperatures will come back down to a safer area. Now, people do panic when their uh, CPU starts to get to 70 degrees Celsius under full load using something like this. But normally that's pretty normal for uh, a system like this because you're taxing the CPU to maximum 100% and basically it is going to get a little bit hot. Uh, depends on your cooling uh, solutions that you've got. If you've got a stock Intel cooler or a stock AMD cooler, you may see slightly higher temps unless you've got an alpha market cooler. There's loads of variables to take into account when it comes to uh, CPU temps and GPU temps. So I guess the answer to does it really matter what thermal pace you choose is going to be yes and no, depending on what type of scenario you're having. So if you're an extreme overclocker, then maybe thermal paste is a big thing for you. But for the average general computer user, then I don't think it really matters what ceramic thermal paste you use, as long as you've got a good coverage on the uh, heat spreader and then basically using an adequate cooler on there to cool the CPU. I don't see the big deal about what type you choose. It depends on whether you're one of those people that want the absolute best and got money to burn, then by all means go out and spend all that money on expensive thermal compound for those extra few degrees that you're going to get from it. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. hope this video has been some sort of use to you and gives you some sort of clarity on whether which thermal compound is the best and which one you should use. It's all going to come down to the individual. At the end of the day, it depends on how much you want to spend. I mean, the Arctic MX4, which is pretty good stuff, you get four grams of that for four pounds and 17 pence. And if you're looking for the uh, thermal grizzly cryonut, you're looking at 16 pounds and 48 pence, and that's for 1.5 mils or 5.5 grams. So it's 
three times the difference near enough. So quite expensive. And uh, you're going to get probably like a one degree or two degrees difference and maybe none at all, depending on your testing. So do your own testing and you'll find out what sort of results you're going to get between all of them. It's not going to be a massive amount of difference, I can assure you. Anyway, I'm starting to waffle and I'm going to end the video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in another video tomorrow. Bye for now.